Um, that we sound like. Oh, you do. Uh, yeah. Your daughter's name is Clary, <laughs> right. and your wife's name is Gates. Right. You sound like distant relatives of the Kennedys. <laughs> and when they have those like, announcements, the guy goes, joining the board was Gates and Kennedy. They weren't English, I don't know why, but, but, but they always have the guys at the front be English. They just sound better. So even if you have a terrible name, now I'm going to insult somebody. But if you were like, if you were, welcome, groom a pile. It's like, it sound, doesn't sound bad. Come out of that right, guy's let's mouth. Let's roll. Let's roll. Babylon and, uh... Safety first. <laughs> well, let's go to music. Let's talk about your, uh, let's talk about your playlist here. So I listen to, um, I work out, I go running, I can't lift weights. Clearly, um, I don't know how why the shot is, but uh, this is pretty thick material. Um, but I do I do a lot of running, and um, I go to Runyon Canyon, which is where we're headed right now. And uh, it's really it's a, it's a beautiful um, outdoor you know scenic run. And what I do is when I listen to my iPod, I listen to '80s montage music. So I listen to like at the end of the movie Teen Wolf. Right. There's that that song "Win in the End," um, which I listen to, and I actually have a playlist called "Montage" on my iPod. Or I have "You're the Best Around" by Joe uh, Bean Esposito from a little film called The Karate Kid. Um, I have another one called um, "Rock Until You Drop," which is, um, I believe, by E.G. Daily, and that's uh, that's from the movie Monster Squad. And uh, just because I grew up in that, I really like that. I, I like. I like 80s movies and I like, um, it inspires me. I got the one from The Wizard, Send Me an Angel. I got them all, people. Um, that, that would be the first album of what Kite calls music, is uh, 80s montage. So I listen to a lot of um, that type of stuff. My mother um, works and has worked for 30 some odd years in country music. So I listen to everything. Um, rap, R&B, uh, you know, I don't. I think that if there was one thing that I probably don't listen to as a, a, one of my good buddies is a, like a speed metal guy. Yeah. And so I always, I'm always open to listening to it in the car because he'll, he'll you know, like tell me the new speed metal stuff and I'll listen to it and I'm, every now and then I'll find something, but it's a general thing. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of speed metal. Um, but I love uh, rock country, everything, and I, and I kind of listen to... I'm the worst DJ at a party because they'll be like, yeah, let's use your iPod, and then it'll be, it'll be like... It'll be like Duran Duran, come undone, and then it'll be, and then it'll be like, like you know, all my exes live in Texas, and people are <laughs> like, somebody has a record player there just so they can scratch it and stop the room. Like there's another, there's like, I, I just uh, you know, it's like they don't. People are like, and, and then there was Michael Jackson, um, you know, just ran, but but like the slowest Michael Jackson song that you'd only play. Like. The lady in my life. Like exactly. That. You'd only play it in a credit sequence <laughs> if somebody was running on a beach towards the ocean. And, like you just don't. That there's like there's no like you could listen to it by yourself or or you know I mean it's a great listen but at a party and I have a lot of party stuff like I love Rick Ross and like my other big playlist is um I really like rap and R and B and I'm a huge Rick Ross fan I like I really love Lil Wayne um, Eminem uh, saw him in concert in Vegas uh, big. You know, like I really enjoy that type of music. I love Kanye and uh, Jay Z, and so when my friends and I go out, we uh, we I play. If 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 I get to um, hijack the iPod, I always put on Rick Ross. Like um, like there's a song out right now called John. It's Lil Wayne. It's on the Carter Four, and it's um, it's with him and Rick Ross, and that song is sick. I listen to that song almost every day before I go into work, <laughs> because I think um, you know we get up. I get up fairly early in the morning, like 6 a.m. or 6.30, and, um, you know, sometimes I'm not there, but I, that song always really pumps me up to go. I, I love, uh, I just, I love that. It's funny, I um, I often, because they trim my beard up on the show, but there's periods when we go on hiatus, you know, when we shoot some episodes and then we're done, and I always come back and I always tell the, um, the, the hair and makeup person, uh, my friend Malika, I always say, yo, I got Ross beard, time to trim. <laughs> It's just because it just it just gets like it gets like a haze uh, or a, uh, a hedge maze. Other music I'm trying to get else. I'm listening. The new group that I'm listening to right now that's not new is I'm listening to a lot of Duran Duran. I took a road trip with my cousin and we were listening. We had rented a car, um, and there was a Sirius uh, XM radio mm -hmm. and the, and Come Undone. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. came on the air, and I thought, and I'd, I'd heard it a hundred times, but I'd heard it in that moment when we were driving back. So what happened was, we drove up to San Francisco or San Jose um, for the wedding, and we took we didn't take one of our cars because um, I drive a ninety nine, and he drives. Um, like a 72 I don't know what he drives but it's not we, we weren't sure it was going to make the trip to Mordor and um, we uh, we were really tired and we stayed for the wedding but we decided to just drive back we decided we're like we're not going to stay we'd already rented a hotel room we were just like let's go home we both have a ton of work to do I had lines to work on for Monday so we drive back we've been in the car you know it's like I don't remember how many hours like five six hours there and five six hours back the wedding was an incredible time. We were all really, we were partied out, but we're like, let's drive back. So at this point, we are finding ourselves in our own road trip 80s movie. <laughs> and and that song comes on. I mean, we, 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 we're kind of foggy faced to each other and we're going, oh man, we don't know if this was the best idea. And Come Undone comes on. And I remember we kind of turned to each other. Probably wasn't the safest that one of us wasn't watching the road at 65 <laughs> or 70. And went, this song is an amazing song. <laughs> and it really got me back into just listening to Duran Duran, a group that I have liked for a long time. Um, and so I've been listening to a lot of that. In terms of new there's, bands. There's oh, another good. great song from that same Duran Duran album that I really, the other big single from it that I really love, uh, Ordinary World. Oh, it's yeah. Really, God. There's yeah. some really cool chord chord changes in that that are kind of cool. They're, yeah, amazing. They're so great. And they're still touring, which is mm-hmm. awesome. They were just here, but I had to work. Um, white people problems, right? <laughs> Might have worked at a TV show. I couldn't see Dar- Duran Duran. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut in some pictures of, like, Ethiopian star, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Sally Struthers. <laughs> uh, me as Sally Struthers. Um, I, uh, I like... In terms of, like, brand new bands, I really like... Not brand new because they've been around for a while, but they're really hitting it big as of late as Mumford and Sons. Oh, yeah. Because I really like folk music. Um, I think uh, my, I mean, I really, Simon and Garfunkel is um, one of my favorite bands of all time, and I like that there's, it's, it's kind of coming back in the country. I really like country, old and new. I'm, I love Hank Williams, um, and uh, I like that there's kind of an old feel. Uh, Two Broke Girls this fall uh, on there you CBS. Go. Look at that. Look at that. Where's your pretty face up there? You know what? I'm actually, this is true. I have to, I'm going to figure out how to get back there. Yeah. And um, again, this is, hopefully this is not being taped right now, this conversation. <laughs> and I'm going to try to stand in the middle, like, like Rocky, <laughs> and have someone, and have someone take a picture. I'm serious. I'm trying to, I got to figure out when there's, there's the least amount of police traffic that's going here. And, um, <laughs> safety first kids, by the way. And, uh, yeah, so... Those are the two lovely women that I'm lucky enough to work with every day. Harrison Ford is my... I love Harrison Ford at interviews. Because that guy, I mean, he, he's been around forever, and he's right. done it all. I mean, the three Indiana Jones films, I didn't say the fourth. Um, and uh, the three Star Wars films, you know, he's he's in the six highest... I, there was a number because he got back end points or something. Uh-huh. Um, this is like this interview is like a Wikipedia page. We're not sure how much of it is truthful. <laughs> We're just aware that it's out there in the universe now. Um, somebody said. Somebody said, uh, not Jonathan Kite, um, somebody you trust and love. Um, anyway, but he, I love him in interviews because he, he's just been there. He's done it all. That yeah. he has that. He just gets there. There's a great one of him on Conan. I'm plugging Conan this this fall and forever on TBS. Um, I love Conan, but uh, yeah, Harrison Ford. If I have to roll this up, let me know. I, pres- I should pretend I was pressing a button, so it seemed like it was like. <laughs> Like Michael Winslow from the Police Academy movies. Like, <laughs> you see my mouth? I'd have to have like a hand burka. <laughs> you couldn't see it go up. Anyway, um, I love Harrison Ford though. I, I do. The impressions, I will say this about the impressions that I do. They come out of a place of, um, of total respect. Yeah. Uh, every now and then, I mean, I've been on, um, I've been hired to do impressions and stuff, so I'll learn people that I have a, maybe have not heard of or aren't super familiar with. Right. And um, there's a, you know, that I, I wouldn't necessarily listen to, you know, this person or whatever. But the, the impressions growing up, um, and certainly the ones that I am most like to do, uh, are come from people that I love and I really, really, really respect. But uh, can you can we just say something real quick? Is, it, is the camera on? Yeah. What is up with the parking attendant or the paying the right aid up here? 
guys. Come. Like a valet? I don't know what it is, but they're charging you to park in the lot. Um, what? Um, anyway, it's Rite Aid, people. Um, so, also my, my favorite breakfast place in town is here, which is the other reason I'm taking Fairfax, is that it's the Griddle Cafe. I don't know if you've ever eaten there, but it's effing amazing. Uh, it's really, really, really good. It, it's, the, the food is just, it's really, um, it's extravagant. And, uh, yeah, it's like if Candyland had a restaurant. Um, with, with like a, a, with like a salty brother. It's really good. Um, and what was up with that park intended? So I've been a fan of Cats for a long time and I perfect writing for her and she's so brilliant on the show and, and Beth came along and it's, you know what, it's easy, I think it's easy, it's easy to like them, period. Yeah. Let alone me, my character, whatever. They're such likable people. Yeah. And I think they're really good at their job. So I think, you, it, like, you all, you want to root for them on the show. Yeah. And um, I think the audiences really get into that because even before we had aired, um, we had really, we had a lot of people, we, you know, we had packed houses at tapings, and their audience response was so strong. It was so cool because you could tell that they weren't, they were getting behind the women, um, show like a big thing it was just kind of like this it was like a play that we were putting on like parents night at camp like that nobody had really you know maybe they had heard something about the show they probably had known Kat Dennings or Garrett Morris but the fact that they were just really behind the women from the writing I thought was just awesome and from That's their acting awesome. yeah look at that can we get a shot of that can we get a shot of that unbelievable what are you kidding me people <laughs> I go, where are you going with all that stuff? And he's like, he's like, well, I work at Bristol Farms. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. And then I'm, I'm like, oh, is there just like, he goes, that's where we keep, like, he didn't want to, he thought we were going to break in and steal their liquor. I'm like, dude, it just, look at you. You look like, you look like um, that, you know, like a video game where you, you're like a giant in someone's world. Or it's like an undercover giant FBI agent trying to Gulliver's travel it. I'm like, <laughs> With the tiny shopping With the cart. tiniest shopping cart ever. That looks like that looks like a keychain. I feel like if you shake that cart, it goes bee, 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 bee. <laughs> like Spencer's gift. Um, anyway, so continuing with the '80s theme, Spencer's gifts. S Spencer's gifts. I just remember that. Remember, remember Arcadia. Arc. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why Arcadia is not around anymore because that's the reaction people have. Uh, yeah, that's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Turn to Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not. This is 